This is your ultimate guide to breathing. You will learn how to breathe properly to energize your body, but also to calm yourself down. You will learn about the optimal way to breathe and how you can achieve it fast. By the way, my name is Albert. If you are new here and you want to optimize your health to burn fat, live long and feel incredible, consider subscribing. I want this video to be very practical. So the more tips that you utilize, the better that you will breathe. So how should you breathe? Well, the most important thing is that you have to breathe through your nose instead of your mouth. Your nose is really like the filter of air. So when you are breathing the air that is not fresh, it helps make it fresher. In addition to that, it also regulates the temperature of your breath, which is very important. And mouth breathers have all sorts of problems. Mainly, they have an increased risk of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and dementia and the difference between mouth breathers and nasal breathers is huge. And also, people who used to breathe through their mouth at a very young age have this weird na uh, nose structure. I myself have that because I was a mouth breather. I used to have stuffed nose all the time, so I used to breathe through my mouth, but fortunately, for me, it was just a habit and one thing that really helped me start breathing through my nose was mouth taping. So before you go to bed, you tape your mouth with a tape and it will force you to breathe through your nose. Don't worry, you will not die if you tape your mouth and you cannot breathe through your nose. At worst, you will wake up and you will have to take the tape down. But I honestly never woke up because of that my body will just work extra hard to breathe through the nose. I mean, if you have some rare disease that makes you unable to breathe through your nose, check in with your doctor be before you follow my advice because it could harm you. But I think there is no report whatsoever of somebody dying by simply taking uh, tape in his mouth. I also want to make a point that you don't only inhale through your nose, but you also want to exhale through your nose, not through your mouth. The thing is, Exhaling through your mouth would not be a big problem, but you want your exhale, which we will talk about, you want your exhale to be longer than your inhale. And if you exhale through your mouth, it will be faster. So nasal inhale, nasal exhale. And please tape your mouth in the evening. Even if you are not a mouth breather, you might still breathe through your mouth or, or, or get sleep apnea in the evening. How about when you need more oxygen? Should you breathe through your mouth or your nose? Well, still you should use your nose only. One big mistake when I walk into a gym is that I see everybody breathing through his or her mouth. It is harder to keep breathing through your nose when you exercise, but it pays off. It is especially important to breathe through your nose as you exercise. And it is especially important when you breathe through your nose when you are in a gym because the air in there is carcinogenic. It sometimes is not that bad, sometimes it is really bad. Still worth it to exercise, still lift heavy, even if you can't breathe through your nose yet, but once you do that, once you can do that, do that. Do not raise your chest when you are breathing, when you are inhaling. Instead, you want your belly to expand and go back. Or what would be even better than belly breathing, what would be even more optimal would be 360 breathing. Meaning that you don't only expand your belly, but all the area. You do 360 breathing. When we inhale and we raise our chest, well, first of all, it damages our posture in the long run, even if it doesn't look like that. And second of all, you also are not inhaling as much as you could. Another benefit of belly breathing in opposed to chest breathing, is that when you inhale, you stimulate the vagus nerve, which calms you down and makes you more relaxed. So as you inhale and exhale, you don't want to raise your shoulders. One way to practice belly breathing, we will get to the practical exercises later, but you can tighten a string, a kitten string for example, around your belly, and feel it as it expands and contracts. You want to breathe very slowly and probably the slower the better. There is no limit. So some yogis 
can actually take one breath in 10 minutes. At least that's what I've heard. If you can do it, that's incredible and it is definitely better than breathing 16 times in a minute. 16 is the average and you want to get to 12 or less, preferably 3 or less. Breathing is directly correlated to your posture. So the straighter your posture is, the better you will breathe. Ketosis will actually help you increase your breath hold and therefore you will also take longer breaths. So a ketogenic diet or fasting might actually be a great way to reduce stress. Baking soda is another nutritional tip that you can incorporate to breathe better. Because baking soda equals sodium bicarbonate and the bicarbonate part makes you better at utilizing oxygen. So I personally put baking soda into my fasting drink every day. I consume like a teaspoon of baking soda per day. Make sure that the air around you is clean. This doesn't necessarily improve your breathing patterns, but it sure benefits your health. So there are a couple things you can do. You can install HEPA air filters in your household you can protect yourself from secondhand smoke and stuff. Another way to improve your breathing patterns is to learn how to relax your body. Try it right now. As you are sitting or standing, focus on your body and see the stiffness in there. Chances are you have a lot of stiffness in your legs, in your butt, everywhere. And as you relax these parts, you will become calmer and you will breathe better. That is another thing. Stress really damages the way you breathe and the way you breathe then makes you more stressful. So it's a vicious cycle. If you learn how to calm yourself down and be a calm person, your breath will improve automatically. So meditation and yoga might come in handy. More about yoga in a second, but another tip I have for you is to build a strong core. Because core exercises not only improve your posture, which is great for breathing already, but more importantly, they work out those muscles around your diaphragm. This allows you to breathe more deeply and breathe through your diaphragm. I want you to be aware of screen apnea. This is just as dangerous as sleep apnea. When you are watching a screen, be it your TV or your mobile phone or your laptop, you are not focusing on your breath and you are up, uh, subconsciously not breathing properly. And sometimes you are not breathing at all, just like when you have sleep apnea. And over time, this causes all sorts of problems. During exercise, and especially when you do cardio, you want to incorporate b uh, uh, rhythmic breathing. Rhythmic breathing means that you always inhale and exhale with the same length. So for example, when you are running, you do one, two, three, that was inhale, and four, five, that's exhale. And you repeat this over and over. Try it out and what you will notice is that this rhythmic breathing method will really improve your endurance. You will be able to run for much longer. I will now give you some highly effective exercises that will help you improve your breath really fast. Before we jump into it, I just want to tell you that it's not so much about how much oxide you have or how little oxide you have, but more so about how much uh, CO2, carbon dioxide, you can tolerate. This will come in handy when you are choosing the best exercise as far as breathing. So, one very common technique is Wim Hof breathing. I myself do something very similar to Wim Hof breathing. In fact, I do almost Wim Hof breathing. And you, the basic idea of that is that you hyperventilate. You inhale and exhale very rapidly, similarly to holotropic breath work. But just like with holotropic breath work, this exercise was not really invented to improve your breathing patterns. It was invented, first of all, to hallucinate and second of all, to tolerate cold better. So I personally do it for spiritual purposes, but if you think that it will improve your breath, it might, but there are more powerful techniques. Because in short, by hyperventilating, you are flushing out all the carbon dioxide so that your body doesn't feel a need to inhale. That means that when you do this technique, it doesn't teach your body 
how to tolerate higher levels of carbon dioxide, which is what you need to learn if you want to improve your breath. So what is a better method? Well, there is yoga that I talked about. Now, there are two types of yoga. There is Hatha Yoga, the stretching one, and there is spiritual yoga, like Kriya and Kundalini. Both are good for breathing for different reasons. The regular stretching yoga helps you relieve stiffnesses in your body and helps make you more flexible, which is good for your breathing. But the spiritual yoga is even better because it actually focuses on your breath and it actually stretches it in a way. If you take pranayamas, for example, they teach you to do longer breaths and slower. And this yoga is even better for calming you down, which also is incredible for your breath and for your life overall. There is box breathing where you inhale for four, hold for four, exhale for four, and hold for four. I think what's superior to box breathing is the 478 method. You inhale for four, hold for seven, exhale for eight. Both of these are great for calming you down, but none of these in the long run will really improve your breath. If you want to improve your breath hold or have longer breaths, then there is nothing better than Wonka tables. If you are a free diver, you are very familiar with CO2 tables. They are amazing and they can improve your breath really fast. But Wonka tables are like CO2 tables on drugs, on steroids. You basically cut out all the easy parts and you focus on just the hard ones. So with Wonka table, you inhale, you hold your breath. And once you, you know, contract, you want to keep it for 15 seconds. And after that, you will exhale and inhale once and hold again. And you will repeat this for 10 minutes. These 10 minutes are way more powerful than one hour of CO2 tables. So Wonka tables are really unpleasant and you will not want to do them, but they are the exercise when it comes to improving your breath hold. Another powerful one is to blow up balloons. Of course, you are exhaling to your mouth, which is not that great, but you are exhaling a lot of air, which increases your VO2 max. Think of VO2 max like your total lung capacity. When you inhale and exhale very deeply, when you are forced to do that, you are really improving your VO2 max. And the best way to do that is through cardio or working out. So work out. It will not only improve your posture and your core strength, your muscles around your diaphragm, but also it will improve your VO2 max. You can also combine exercising with hypoxia. And hypoxia means that you are not getting enough oxygen in your system. So your body has to learn how to utilize its own oxygen that, it's o that, that it already has. That's where hyperbaric chambers come in place and that's why swimmers such as Michael Phelps sleep in hyperbaric chambers. But they can also be very expensive, so you don't have to buy them. It's not a big deal if you don't. But yeah, this is how you should breathe and how you improve your breath. I hope you liked this guide. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, let me know in the comments what it was. And if you like this concept of ultimate guides, you can check out other ones somewhere here on the screen. They are free to watch. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing and I will see you in the next Ultimate Guide next week. Thank you for watching.